Hey guys, Corey Smith here, CoreFX. Just wanted to uh, make another quick video here for my students. I was getting some questions about trendline application and just wanted to kind of break it down here a little more with a live video for some uh, clarification here. But um, basically what I do is uh, I'm only going to be looking for trend lines that are obvious and major. Trend lines are very subjective and everybody draws them so differently that if we start cluttering our charts up with a million trend lines, I just, I, I, it's counterproductive to me. It just clutters the chart and gives too much stuff that we don't need to see in there. So what I'm doing is um, today is April 13th, 2017. It's around 10.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm picking a trade that I'm looking at. Um, European, the, the euro versus the pound. And basically, I'm going to show you first we start on the weekly chart and draw a trend line. It's in an uptrend, so we're going to be connecting the bottoms. And what I'm doing here is connecting as many of these bottoms as I can. And draw it in a way that it touches as many as it can. Right there would be where I would draw this one. So the reasoning for this placement is, as you can see, initiated on the lows here. Came up, touched the bottom again here. Here it failed to pass through again. It's three touches. Here we have a fourth touch. Here we had a fifth touch, but it broke out, came back up, and now it's breaking out again. So if you see this a little bit more zoomed in here, you can see it kind of broke below. If you zoom in, you can kind of adjust them a little more. That's supposed to be right on this touch. You can see it kind of broke below and came back up, and now it broke out. So it's breaking out of this uptrend line. Moving averages are starting to slant lower. Price is now below the 20 SMA. And a uh, new low here would signify that the trend on the longer time frames has switched. But So on the weekly time frame, we're, we're going to be drawing one or two trend lines. Um, if it was continuing higher, we could try to draw some kind of a trend channel up here, but it's looking like it's topping out and starting to reverse. Another reason, real quick, why I'm in this trade is, as you can see, this is a very strong support level, weekly and daily. You can see all the way back 2013, it was it was a respected area, and it still is now. So if price breaks below that, that's a major area, and that's a big time trade we got looking at there. But so you're going to draw a trend line or two on the weekly chart. I'm only looking for the big major ones that everyone's seeing. This is a big major one. Um, I'm not going to look at any other trend lines at this point on this chart because that's significant enough for me. Now I'm going to drop down to the daily chart. And as you can see better on the daily, price broke out, came up, hit the 50 SMA, topped out here, and now it's falling off again. So what I'm going to do now on here is I could draw a couple trend lines on the daily. I, I don't want to go much further out than this. Same with the weekly. That's why the weekly wasn't going too far back. I don't. Uh, these are longer time frame charts. But I trade on the hourly chart. There's no reason to look further than these. So I'm going to see two points here where I want a trend line. One, I'm going to see here. That looks like it's a good trend line in my eyes. The reasoning I'm picking this is for one, like I said, price is below the SMA is now on the daily. They're about to have a moving average crossover, and the weekly trend line was just broken. So all those signs are telling me I want to look for a short on this pair right now. I'm not looking long. I'm looking short, especially since we've got a new lower low being formed here, right? Price made a lower high, a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. And now it's making another lower low. So what I'm going to expect is for this price to come down, Make another lower low, then come back up, make another lower high, maybe retest this daily trend line it breaks, and then continue back down. That's what my probabilities tells me that's where it's going to hit. But So I'm drawing this daily trend line in the same sense. I'm going to want to make it to have as many touches as I can. If you see, we could either, we could even do it there like that. See, it's touching this trend, this candle failed to break it. These are touching it. This is where it starts. This came down and I'm barely, basically touched it. This came down and hit it, bounced off a little, but now it's busting through. You can see that there. And this is also, you can see, is that support line here that we've got on the daily chart that runs all the way back and is respected all these times. See? So, another trend line you could draw would be here, like this. 
Um, like I said, we're looking short on this pair, which would mean we want to break up trend lines. So I'm not going to be looking for that, but that uh, you could draw that. And if you zoom out, as you can see, we've got like a symmetrical triangle pattern forming here. This is a pattern that can break out in either direction. But as you can see, we were looking to break out lower because the trend has now switched to a downtrend. So that is going to be how you could have used that other chart, that other um, tops for trend line. Because once it's in a downtrend, you're going to be connecting the tops, but then you're going to be looking for a break of those because uh, I'm not going to be, like, for example, in the, um, looking for a short, if I draw an uptrend here, the way I trade, this this is not really good for anything. This trend line doesn't do me any good. I'm looking to go short here, so this trend line's irrelevant. I mean, until price comes back up to retest it somewhere along the way. Right now, it means nothing, so it's irrelevant. So I'm not going to add extra clutter to my chart right now for no reason. I'll just leave that out until I need it. Okay. So you're going to draw the weekly, the weekly on the on the big time frame. You want the charts so again? I'm not going to zoom out to here and try drawing trend lines across all that crap. That's that's too much. I'm going to zoom in so I've got a good look at the past move of the chart. Right. This is good enough. If you can see all the candles in good detail, that's where you want to be. Right. I'm going to draw the major trend line as many touches as I can. And then I'm going to drop down to the daily chart. And the same thing. I'm not zooming crazy out. I want to stay right in here where I can see it. I'm not going all the way down here and trying to connect this with that, with that, and all that. No need. I'm going to go to where I can see the chart. <laughs> Look for wicks, candle bodies, and connect as many of the two as you can. This debatably could be... A little bit up there a little more but uh, again we can cut wicks but we cannot cut through candlestick bodies so if there's a candlestick body that's closed the trend line that's a broken trend line see this this candlestick body bounce bounce this is the second touch to this trend line right third bounce here fourth came down candlestick body broke it that's a break of the trend line this trend line is no longer holding valid unless this candle ends the day with a big rejection wick and the body closes up here and this is just a big wick that could signal that the, the candle that the trend line held because this this candle didn't really break it, it kind of just bounced off it but as the way it's looking right now it, it, this is looking bearish very bearish and this closing this candle below this line it's invalid now Invalid doesn't mean we stop watching it because a lot of times, like I was just saying, price will break below it and then it'll come back up, retest it, and then it'll continue down lower again. All right, so we're going to be connecting candlesticks, mainly the wicks, but also the uh, bodies to connect as many touch points as we can and find the best spot where it looks. And um, once you connect them all, you're going to find the most touches you're gonna to find two plus touches you are gonna confirm it's only a touch once price moves away from it so like we we're just saying here if this fails to close under and closes up here as a hammer candle with a long wick failing to break that it's not a valid touch to the trend line again until we have a bullish candle move away from the trend line like this here this wick failed to break this candle and this candlestick failed to break this trend line I mean this was not a valid touch until these candles showed the price move away. Once price moved away from this trend line, that's when we know it was a touch. All right, so I'm not going to be trying to mark somewhere as a valid touch to the trend line unless there's been a move away from that touch. Price reacted to it. We're looking for areas in the chart that price reacts to, and that is it. Support and resistance, we want strong moves away from multiple touches. Trend lines are the same exact thing as support and resistance, just drawn on an angle. So we want the same exact thing. We want multiple touches. We want strong moves away from it. And trend lines aren't the whole answer to the game, but when you add them with all the other things we're looking at, they can be a very big help. All right. So I hope this quick little video here on uh, trend line application on the daily chart helped you out. Um, actually, real quick, sorry. I'm going to drop down to the hourly now and show you how I can use them on the hourly. So the hourly chart, basically what I'm going to be using them for is to try to identify patterns. As you can see here, we got a descending triangle, just a bearish pattern. Yeah, 
lower highs closing down in on a bottom that's trapped price. So we've got a bottom holding and we've got lower highs being made. Price is condensing, condensing, condensing. Less buyers are coming in, less buyers, less buyers, and price is going to explode out of here. Could explode upwards, could break up, go out that way, but probability tells us this candlestick pattern in a bearish market is going to have the higher chances of breaking lower. So what we're going to be looking for here is a break of the trade that I called out is going to be a break of down here. I'm at about a 4.70. So if price comes down here and breaks below here, I'm going to be looking to go short. And if you back out, uh, if you back out of this trade here, you'll see that price has at least down to this a 4.20 area. Or I mean, uh. 0.8400 at least down to there and with the way I trade that's a that's a really big risk to reward ratio all right so the hourly time frame I just use the the candlesticks to draw patterns and identify breakout patterns like this one here being the um, descending triangle and I'm gonna use the same same style I'm gonna be connecting as many candlestick bodies and wicks as we can I would put this line just to identify the pattern at around those bodies because you can see how many wicks it's touching up there and then this, you're going to connect candlesticks and bodies all the way down. And there you can see we have a, a nice candlestick pattern right there set up. This was also a low that was touched back here on that trend line bounce that we saw. So this is a very significant area. And if you can go and break below it, it's looking like a nice short. But, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on a trend line application on lower time frames. And talk to you soon.